okay so I've got this piece of 1050 steel and I want to split it open along the thickness and it's not very thick uh, it's a half of an inch thick by an inch and a quarter wide and this piece is about three and a half inches long so I'm just showing here that I might just bolster it on the side there just so it doesn't tip over it I think this will have the propensity to want to tip over as I'm initially working it the tool that I'm first using is an old cutter that I have that has a shallow taper so it's more suitable for this thin stock more so than my standard cutter I need to make myself a new slitter which may make this a little bit easier and there you can see that it tipped over as I thought so I'm going to uh, support it on the side there between the two anvils and use that little piece in front as a wedge and this gives me a few good blows and it helps establish it so that it won't tip this way or that way. Okay, uh, enough of this nonsense. I'm going to do the same thing here and just support it on the side between the two anvils and then get it started on that other side. And once that, like I said, once that's established, then I won't need to put it in between like this. I can just work it on my anvil face and swing my hammer as normal. So now I'm able to make enough headway with this cutter and make the cuts meet in the middle. I'm pointing out here where it got skewed a little bit to one side and one way to remedy that is to cool that one thinner side and then work it again and make it expand properly on the opposite side however with a thin piece like this that might not be the best solution uh, it might work with something thicker like a hammer but with a thin piece like this it might crack that cold side so you have to be very cautious if, if you do that sort of an adjustment this very thin punch is a good second tool to use for this sort of an operation. Uh, you know, I don't really want to remove any material, but if your, if your cutter is not aligned uh, perfectly from both sides, then you might have to remove a small slug like you see there. So you can see I'm getting on to progressively wider punches as I go along here. I only show myself using these handheld punches from one side. But in fact, I'm doing it both top and bottom. I want to take a sec to thank two guys for donations. And those guys are Matthew West and George F. Calce. And I hope I said that right. Uh, thanks for the very generous donations. So here's my final drift for this. It has a very wide angle taper and it's rounded on the corners. Right, back to normal speed. Here I'm just putting my initials on this piece. I initially was going to make this into a small camping hatchet, but I think I'll leave it at that for this video. But I can think of at least three different uses for this, you know, the hatchet, even a sort of hammer, and what I might make this into is a, uh, a, a handle top fuller. I think that would be really nice.